Good morning, my name is Malik and I'm here to talk about goal number 14, life below water. So this goal is about oceans, seas and the marine life, so what lives below the water as the name suggests. So its goal is to actually conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development since healthy oceans are essential to our existence. Next up, we have its main targets, as you can see. The first one is about marine pollution and how it needs to be stopped as soon as possible in order to let uh, the sea creatures live. Uh, the second one is about protecting marine and coastal ecosystems in order to achieve healthy oceans. Next one is about carbon pollution and how it has to be reduced as soon as possible. Target number four, it's about overfishing and how uh, it needs to be stopped uh, and fishers should start sustainable fishing instead. Next one is about conserving at least 10% of coastal and marine areas. Number six is about um, ending illegal and unregulated uh, fishing. I don't know if you knew about this, but um, there is this thing called blast fishing, which basically um, is a practice that involves um, explosives. So basically what I'm trying to say is that fishers use explosives uh, to kill fish for an easy collection. Target number seven is about increasing the um, scientific knowledge, research and technology um, for ocean health. The next one is about providing access for small-scale artisanal fishers to marine assets and markets. And the last one is about enhancing the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and their resources by implementing international law according to UNCLOS. You probably know about this and how tourism is actually one of the reasons why our oceans are polluted nowadays. As you can see, here are some examples of how tourism is actually harming our oceans. Um, the first one is about coastal areas and how they um, keep getting eroded by tourists. Uh, in fact, more than half of the world's reef are suffering from man-made and natural damage, some of it directly and indirectly caused by tourism. Next up, we have sunscreen and how they can actually cause some damage uh, to our seas. Uh, in fact, no sunscreen is 100% safe for marine life, oceans, and coral reefs. Some sunscreen brands, though, um, are significantly more friendly compared to sunscreens uh, with dangerous ingredients. The next one is the cruise ship. In fact, cruise ships are seen as environmentally destructive since they cause waste disposal and the creation of noise, which is harmful to marine life. They dump fuel into the ocean and they use diesel fuel, which is a high source of pollution, given the fact that it produces a nitrogen oxide emissions um, that have a high sulfur content. And it is known by few that sulfur plus water plus air um, create this sulfuric acid that, is, um, that it is the main component of acid rain. Last one we probably all know about this it's about the trash that ends up in the oceans so tourists in fact litter beaches with straws coffee cups water bottles and cigarette butts um in fact in october 2018 thailand announced the closing of maya beach indefinitely to clean up the the unstoppable amount of plastic and drainage that um tourists caused even though tourism um, is damaging our oceans, as you saw before, tourism could actually become one among the most effective tools to further the protection of oceans and seas globally. So it actually could play an important role. Hotels, for example, could sponsor campaigns, uh, raising awareness about the fragility of the oceans and foster initiatives, um, informing travelers about marine life and species like dolphins, uh, whales, and coral reefs. Additionally, uh, civil society uh, coalitions called Forum to Push Sustainable Practices in seaside, uh, in seaside Areas. So when properly planned and managed, sustainable tourism can actually help our environment.
So next up, we have something that um, Kitak Lim said, uh, who is the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization. I'm going to read this real quick so you'll get what he's trying to say. Uh, so he said, we need to educate the public not only about the big changes that we face because of the damage to our oceans, but also about all the small ways our lives will change inexorably, as the impact of our actions is increasingly felt, as well what, as what can be done to rectify the situation. This is a saying and also a reminder by Winston U. Gauden. I don't know if it's pronounced like this. Um, so he said, thousands have lived without love, not one without water. So this is just a reminder on how we really should think about our actions more and how our actions really have ruined our environment. Our environment, in fact, has become fragile. And so think before doing something. Like everyone says, our future is in our hands. So if you don't act now or change now, we'll never will. Thank you for watching.